Well, hello again. Great to be together for another Devo today. Well, we've turned the page and now we are in Mark's gospel. Uh, man, how great. We just kind of keep moving along through uh, the New Testament together. And uh, this, this little portion that we're going to take is in the first chapter, beginning with uh, the 16th verse. And I really thought it would be worthwhile for us, you know, Mark, if you'll notice, when you read through the first chapter, you'll find he doesn't make any mention of any kind of genealogy or anything. He's coming at Jesus from that servant perspective. That's how he's coming at it, from the serve Jesus as 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 a almost as a, a, a just a slave, a servant. And you know what? When it came to servants and stuff, which there were many, many in the Roman Empire, and he's writing somewhat uh, with his eyes on uh, Roman people uh, and kind of trying to communicate the gospel to them. They're not interested. That doesn't mean anything to them. That just doesn't mean a servant had no history, basically, from their perspective. It didn't matter. It was only who they were and what they did. So here we get right down to it in the 16th verse. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, speaking of Jesus, Jesus saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Jesus looks over. Now, these guys, is this isn't necessarily the first time they've ever heard about or seen Jesus. There's things, there's been rumblings, things are going on. There's this rabbi, this itinerant rabbi, this wandering, you know, there's things starting to rumble. But he looks over at them, he says, said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. You're fishermen, but I want to make you become. And I think that's important that Jesus is the one that calls, Jesus is the one that gifts. Jesus is the one that anoints through the power of the Spirit to to become what he wants us to be or who we're designed to be, whatever that might be. And I think you need to notice, if, if you would, and I would encourage you to go back through from the very first verse and start, when you go through Mark, just start highlighting the word immediately. The number of times it shows up is phenomenal when you go through this. He says, they immediately left their nets and followed him. They didn't delay. They didn't, you know, try and figure out, you know, well, what's the 401k one? What's the 401k plan? What's the, what's the, you know, what, what kind of housing is it going to be? Are they giving me a package on this to move? Is there a signing bonus? I mean, none of this gets discussed, you'll notice, because the calling of God does not function. The kingdom doesn't operate that way. God will take care of you and me, but I like this. They're just regular guys, fishermen, regular people who are called by God and are going to be used by God mightily in the world in which they live, just like he wants to do with you. When he had gone a little further from there, he saw James, and the son, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and notice that word immediately again, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. They went after him. I think that's so important that we go after God. We, we pursue him. You know, it, it, Jesus calls your name and you and I, our response is to immediately pursue him. And you think, well, I didn't immediately. Don't worry about that. Start being immediate today. The idea of immediately that it keeps getting, I believe Mark is, is conveying to us that there is an urgency, that Jesus is always on a schedule, and that it is urgent that we respond to his schedule, not ours. God bless you. You think on that. That's enough to contemplate for sure. Have a great day.